بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين نبي نستعين على كل أمور الدنيا والدين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ونور قلوبنا وقرة أعيننا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم لا تتعلم وتعنيم وتذكر وتزكير ونفع والانتفاع ورفاة والاستفادة والحث على تمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الهدى ودلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع لطف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إن نسلك العلم لدني والمشرب الصوفي الهني يا وهب غني اللهم إن نسلك العلم لدني والمشرب الصوفي الهني يا وهب غني اللهم إن نسلك العلم لدني والمشرب الصوفي الهني يا وهب غني وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين اللهم صلي اللهم يا رب سيدنا محمد وآل سيدنا محمد صلي على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله سيدنا محمد وصحبه وسلم وآل علمك وآل فسنا قلبي في الدنيا والآخرة وفرج كروب أمتي وهو الأحوال لهم إلى أحسن أحوال يا رحمن اللهم يا رب سيدنا محمد وآل سيدنا محمد صلي على سيدنا محمد وآل سيدنا محمد وصحبه وسلم على علمك وآل فسنا قلبي في الدنيا وآل علمك وآل فسنا قلبي في الدنيا والآخرة وفرج كروب أمتي وهل أحوالهم من أحسن أحوال يا رحمن اللهم يا رب سيدنا محمد وآل سيدنا محمد صلي على سيدنا محمد وعلى سيدنا محمد وسلم وصحبه وسلم على علمك وأذب سن قلبي في الدنيا والآخرة وفرج كروب أمتي وحل أحواله لأسن أحوال يا رحمن اللهم يا رب سيدنا محمد وسيدنا محمد صلي على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وصحبه وسلم على علمك وفرج وأذب سن قلبي في الدنيا والآخرة وفرج كروب أمتي وحل أحوالهم إلى أحسن أحوال يا رحمن اللهم يا رب سيدنا محمد وسيدنا محمد صلي على سيدنا محمد وعلى سيدنا محمد وصحبه وسلم على علمك وأذب سن قلبي في الدنيا والآخرة وفرج كروب أمتي وحول أحوالهم إلى أحسن أحوال يا رحمن اللهم يا رب سيدنا محمد وسيدنا محمد صلي على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وصحبه وسلم على علمك وأذب سن قلبي في الدنيا والآخرة وفرج كروب أمتي وحول أحوالهم إلى أحسن أحوال يا رحمن في كل لحظة نبدا عن داخلك يا رضا نفسي زنا تعانش من هذه الكلمات تمام الحمد لله سوى السكن لاس لسنة سوى لاس لسنة وبي اون ثيزدي بدو قطم وبدو بوك ان شاء الله ان شاء الله ويكن ميكن رايت امي الله سبحانه الله بينفيد اس باي ديس نوليج ان اللاو اس تو امبلمنت ديس نوليج ان اللاو اس تو ريب دي بينفيس اف ديس نوليج ان ديس وولد ان دي نيكس الحمد لله Uh, so from the book Muhammad, the perfect teacher and insight into his teaching methods by Sheikh Abdul Fattah Abu Ghudda, revised translation by Maulana Muhammad uh, uh, Mahomadi. Uh, may Allah benefit us by them and by their knowledge in both abodes. Right, where he has said, right, so we have come into the hadith right, about Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam teaching some of the uh, teaching one of the female companions about cleansing herself. Right, and we were taking the uh, lessons from this hadith. Right, so we're actually on page two hundred and four. Right, on the we're following up the lessons of this hadith. So number six, it is permitted to explain the words of an alim in his very presence to someone who cannot understand what he is saying, even uh, if it is known that this will please him. This is a very important point. <laughs> right, so if there is a teacher there, right, and just said something. And uh, someone in the gathering does not understand it. Right? If you know the teacher is okay with you leaning over to that person and explain to that person what was meant, right? Then you can get you can go ahead and do so, right? But if you know that it will not please the teacher for you to do that, right? Then it is not okay for you to do so, right? So like a very clear example, uh, for example. Uh, if let's say there's someone who's new to Islam in the gathering, right, and then there are words that he's using that might not, uh, that the person might not, might not understand well. Uh, so that kind of situation is okay to lean over and just uh, tell the person the meaning of the word, 
right? Because uh, otherwise they will not be able to follow the discussion. Right? So it's it's okay if you like the teacher or if the teacher is used a Malay word, right, in a gathering, but it's supposed to be in English. And uh, this who sometimes I, I myself sometimes use Malay words, and there are people who are there who you know you know they don't know Malay. Uh, so you can lean over to them and you can just tell them the, the word lah, right, in that situation. Of course, the best is that you actually raise your hand and you clarify with the teacher uh, the meaning of that particular word or the concept or the idea or whatever that you feel people there will not understand. right? And even if you understand it, I know sometimes when, when Hababa speaks or so, and I know she's going through things, and I know that uh, certain things people might not have gotten it quickly, uh, 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 gotten it thoroughly. I, I will actually raise my hand, and ask a question, I uh, based on that, even though I know the answer, <laughs> right? But it's just because for the benefit of those who are there, who might not have gotten it uh, clearly, right? What was the hukum? What was the ruling? What was the uh, lesson that was there? Right, so I will purposely raise questions uh, as, tra- as a translator or as a, a student there, right, so that those whom I know who are in the gathering, uh, whom I know probably did not get that, <laughs> right, just to make her repeat it or to explain it in a different way. Uh, then uh, just for her to uh, uh, do that. Because I know for her, she will, uh, she will prefer that I don't whisper to people in gatherings. Uh, so if you do see the teacher uh, going through something a bit too fast, or maybe not fast, but maybe the people then require a second time explanation, right? And if you know the personality of a teacher, right, that she would rather you ask the question and then she re- she will explain it and respond, right? As opposed, uh, or if you know a teacher would be would rather that you know you you don't uh, interrupt the lesson, but you actually just explain by the side uh, to that person. So in a sense, it does it does go back to what would please the teacher. Right, so it, uh, and then so adapt lah, adapt to a teacher. Eh? It's very very uh, important to learn adapt to a teacher. Right, so it also like for me personally, the children I will teach them this, uh, because they are children and they don't understand. They are learning adapt, uh, they are learning adapt. Right, so it is on the teacher to actually just as always on the parent to teach the child how to respect the parent. Right? and you failing to teach the child how to respect you is actually your fault when they don't respect you. Right, so that means they you get you get double the uh, the pain lah, the pain of of you having to of you bearing the blame right, in them not knowing how to respect parents and you bearing the pain in uh, them being uh, disrespectful towards you. Right, same thing with a teacher. Right, if the if a, if the students are disrespectful towards the teacher, then the teacher needs to uh, teach them right, how to respect her uh, or respect him, not because for herself or himself. Right, but because of the knowledge right, that Islam has placed and, and the importance to respect knowledge. Right, so Ayana Ali said that he is a slave to, to even the one who taught him uh, one letter of the Arabic alphabet. Right, so in a sense, they, they really dedicate themselves right, to their teachers. And they are of the ulama who, they will, there was one, there was one alim, that whenever a young boy would walk past the majlis, he would get up. Right, and then when they asked him, you know, whenever this young boy walks past the majlis, you get up. Right, why do you do so? And he said that that is the grandson of my sheikh. Who has passed away? <laughs> she had passed away, and it was a grandson. So, out of honor for his sheikh, he used to, you know, honor the grandson of the sheikh. <laughs> right, but these are people who understand uh, respect, and they understand honoring right, of the uh, uh, of the teacher. Also, sitting with the parent, right, to honor and to respect the uh, the parent. Right. So, like for me personally, when I when I teach his children, right, and for all people, like when you teach children, when you teach, when you teach adults, young adults, when you teach. Uh, your own children, right? You need to make it important. Adab, right? adab is more important, right, than the subject matter itself, right? The adab uh, towards the teacher, towards knowledge, right? So for me, if you've seen, like, because of all these lessons, right, I will, uh, I will stop the lesson then, then if I see bad adab, and I will point it out then, then if I see bad adab, right? Uh, because it's not something to just you know close one eye and. You know, you don't, uh, you don't want to bother so much with it. Like of if of everything in the lesson, the thing that you should bother about is bad adab. Right, the thing that you should bother about. Right, any wrong tone, wrong intonation, any wrong way of seating, right, any uh, uh, behavior in class is unacceptable. Right, all of these things you need to nip it in the bud. Right, so that it does not grow. The more you leave, the longer you leave it, the the, the worse it gets. Right, in this kind of uh, situation, right? So, uh, so, so like, like, like last week, uh, when I gave the was the primary school kids, <laughs> when I gave them work to do, 
Right, and I point this out lah. Like, when I get them work to do, and I and I and I make sh- and I make them <laughs> search for a word in their passage, right? And the reason why I did that is because it's a it's a method of making them focus on the page. Otherwise, their eyes go everywhere. Yeah. So so to make them focus on the on the passage, right? Uh, I make them search a word like a game, ah, <laughs> and who can find this word? Uh, so when they found find the word, who's the first to circle it right, or to highlight it? And once the circle highlighted, then there is a focus on the page. Otherwise, the eyes will not focus on the page. It'll go everywhere, all over the place. Right? So, that is a method. Lah. Uh, uh, so, when I did that, it was more of to make them uh, try their best to look for the word. Right? So, but then, because uh, they, are, they are of different age groups. So, there were those who were older, right, who began, who was, who was, who was going to point out to the younger ones where's the word. Right? And straight away at that point, you know, I, that one, I, I stopped it. Right? I, I should say the person's name out loud. And I said, don't do that. Right, don't do that. And then I and I had to teach the older ones, right, that you don't don't think you're helping your friends when you show them where's the answer. You're not helping, right? And also that I am right there. If they need help, I can help them. And the reason why I'm not helping them because I want them to try. Right? I don't want to show them the answer. The whole point is to show them the answer. Right? So then I give them <laughs> the older ones. I give them a bit of a uh, like a lesson, lah. Right, that you don't you don't help unless. Uh, I ask you to help them right, when it comes to classwork. Right, if I said if I didn't ask anyone to help anyone, right, you are not to help unless I tell you to help because you're helping is not helping, <laughs> right, in a sense. Right, because I mean they don't, but they don't understand because they're not they're not teachers, uh, so they don't know that showing answer is not helping. Uh, you're just showing, uh, so you need to let them look through the words and figure out which one is the correct word. Uh, that kind of thing. So in the sense, so that, 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 that in a sense, like to teach them also that you know just just and and don't. Uh, like, because they, they, they're in different rows, so they even crawl to the front row to try and help the people in the front row. And I said, I didn't, like, I didn't say stand up, I didn't say get up, just sit down. Right? Wait until I uh, had the, the instructions. But all this thing is all part of adab. Lah. Right? Wait for instructions. Right? Uh, 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 follow the teacher's lead. Right? What is she doing? Right? At the same time, also don't whisper to each other then in class and all that kind of things. So, classroom management, classroom discipline is the amana of a teacher. Is the amana right, on a teacher to be able to teach, and that is why in our society, like the young adults who really don't know how to behave in in uh, in front of a uh, in front of a teacher, right? Because they were not, uh, not were not trained or not taught or whatever it was like eh, that was forgotten. So here it says that it was so it must it must be known. So before you do anything in class, if you're in class and your teacher is there, before you do anything, you need to know if it will please your teacher or not. And you need to know if they will it, or it will upset the teacher and or will disrupt the class. And you must know this by the character of the teacher. Right? Different teachers have different characters. So when I handle my teachers, each of them have their character. Right? So I, I know what will rub some teachers the wrong way and what will not. Right? So and by, that goes under whether you know or not lah, your teachers. Right? So number seven, it is permissible to learn from a person who is less learned. In this case, in Aisha, in the presence of a person who is more learned, in this case Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? So you have two people. There's one who is more learned, one less learned, right? And but the less learned one knows the ruling, right? Knows the uh, knows the lesson, right? So you can actually ask that person for help, right? So for me, I allow this, like, especially in my Arabic intensive, I will uh, like if I know of students, and this is what what also do. If you know of students who are stronger, and those who are who are struggling. Right, then they will pair them up, right? And this and this indication pairing them up is an indication to the stronger one that you are to help her along the way, right? And that means I'm putting you two next to each other, uh, so that is it is like she needs personal one-on-one attention, right? Which as a teacher is hard to give, uh, so you pair the person up with someone who, but you must also make sure that this person knows how to teach, lah. Knows give all the answers, <laughs> right? So he knows how to how to help that person out, right, in a way. So it's permissible to do that. And number eight, it's permissible for a student to read to his teacher if the latter agrees, even if he does not verbally say yes after what has been uh, after what has been read, right? So it, uh, so so it, like some some teachers they will make the students read the book, right? and then they will explain. And like Habib, he will do that. He will always say, say read, and then they will read, and then he will explain. Read, explain. Then there are teachers who who like them to, by themselves. They read it. They like to read the book themselves and explain themselves. I would ask a student to read. So it's permissible either way. 
With regard to the imparting of knowledge, it is not a prerequisite for the listener to understand everything that he hears. Right? It's important. Right? Because of course you're you're a learner. Right. So there are things in, in what is being said, right, that you might not understand. Right? And uh, what is important for you to understand, then you must understand lah. Right? So for Rasulullah Sallam in this case, right, what she didn't understand was where to put the mask. Right. If she left without answering that part, it's okay. It's not wajib. Right. So there are things that you don't understand. It's okay, you don't understand it. It's okay. Right. It's not wajib. Right. And the teacher will have to know, right, whether what you don't understand is it important to understand this or is it not important to understand it. Right. So if the child realizes that, you know what, it's not really you know, it's not wajib for you to understand this, it's okay. <laughs> right. So sometimes for me when I do Nahu also when I teach Nahu, you know, I've come to a point whereby if they still don't understand it, it's okay. <laughs> right, you, you know your, your nahu will not determine your taqwa. It's okay. <laughs> right, then just, 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 you know. I mean, I mean, you know, why, why is important? You know, you have taqwa, and then you, you, you fear Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and you do your prayers well, do your, do your, do your sunnahs well, right? And then that is why it's important, lah. <laughs> right, for you to do, no put things where they are, lah. That's why when I teach in Masjid Halid, uh, I get very stressed whenever I mark uh, fiqih and akidah papers. Because you just like because this, this is this is this is this wood, huh? It is in very it is the most important thing in your life. <laughs> it's more important than anything anything else that, you, that you're gonna uh, uh, engage yourself with, right? So you know, so when you make like big mistakes in Akida and big mistakes in Fiki, I I feel like calling out the person to just ensure your Akida is correct. <laughs> you know, your Fiki is correct. You can't be praying like this, <laughs> and all the prayer all that sound, the wudu all that sound. You know, I like you know like because you, you get stressed up. Is their is their worship? You get so stressed up, <laughs> right? Uh, but if they make mistakes in their maths or chemistry or physics, you're like, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> you you won't go to the hellfire for messing up your chemistry. <laughs> like in a way, like in a sense, you know, like like to know what is important for them to understand and what is what is not really that important if you don't understand. It's okay, <laughs> right? So there are that's so why in Islam also they will they will look at whenever you learn, learn knowledges, you first learn what is the hukum of this knowledge. That's the first thing you learn. What is the hukum of this knowledge? That you must get it. Right? And then uh, and from there you know whether you should chase the teacher with regards to understanding it or not understanding it. Okay, with uh, so so kindness should be shown to students and the excuses of those who do not understand should be accepted <laughs> be nice to people lah. <laughs> right. especially if uh, it is on the teacher because all teaching methods eh, is on the teacher to be able to recognize what subjects not everyone can get it and what subjects it is necessary for everyone to get it Right, and in Islam, very simple. The fardu ain is what is necessary for everyone to get it. Right, very simple fardu ain. Right, and even when it comes to aqida, there is aqida that is general and there is aqida that is specific. So aqida that is general, right, is to know generally there is one God, you know, and that He's the Creator of the heavens and the earth, and we have to worship this God. Right, He is nothing like any of His creation. Okay, that is general aqida. Right, specific akira is to go into is to go into it, uh, the the twenty sifat of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and to understand the twenty sifat of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and that is a specific akira. Right, twenty sifat of of wajib, twenty sifat mustahil fi hakillahi taala. What is compulsory? What is what is impossible? And what is jais? What is uh, permissible? And the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Right, so, and this one is like is In a sense, this is uh, the specific Akidah, right, it is still Fardu Ain, right, but in a sense You know, if a person does not memorize it Right, so if you ask, you know, some You know, any person from the from, from like a village Or whatsoever, you ask them, what are the twins Even not from a village, even in our time Anybody, you, ask, you go into university and you ask the Muslims there, Give me the twins of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Most of them will most likely uh, Not most of them, like some of them Might not know how to give you the twins Right. Do you say that they are like they they have failed in their farduain? No. What is important is if you ask them, okay, you know, do you believe that Allah is all hearing? Yes. Okay, that is important. Right. Uh, how does Allah hear? Oh, there is no how to His hearing. Uh, that is the answer. There is no how to His hearing. And they also ask Halil. Halil, where is Allah? Allah is not where. Uh, that's the correct answer. 
Allah is not where. Uh, there is no way for Allah. Uh, Khalil, uh, 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 does Allah have a body? Allah cannot have body. Uh, that means Akidah, right? Uh, got the correct Akidah. Uh, so I don't have to to go... So he he, he memorized the Tunisifat already, but he memorized it in Arabic, and I don't know whether he knows what it means. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, but, but his Akidah is getting right. Uh, the Akidah is correct. Right, so uh, that's, that's who began Allah? Who began Allah? No beginning to Allah. Uh, Allah cannot begin. Uh, because why? Because He's God. <laughs> and no ending to Allah. You know, Allah sees everything at all the time, and there's no time. And the kind of thing, like, you know, that whereby you, um, you, you drive to the, the Aqidah. Right? Because for him, it was, it was a matter of when I taught Isra Miraj to the children. Uh, he got the idea that Allah is up there, and uh, that Allah that he also went to a place, and he found Allah. Uh, then, then, then when he reported to his mother that uh, and then, that the Masi said that Allah is in a place, and some went there to see Allah, and uh, and then his mother said, "Did you tell him that? Did you tell him that?" And then he said, "He told." Then he was like, "You know, you told that day, that day." And I said, "When did I say that Allah is in a place?" And then, and then he said, "That that day you said for Mama go and see Allah." He said, oh, Isra Mi'raj. <laughs> so to explain to him the entire aqidah of Isra Mi'raj and what do we actually believe in Isra and Mi'raj. And it's not a place. Right? He went to see Allah, but uh, we don't know how, and there's no how, and there's nowhere. And there's... So I tried to explain to him. Lah. But, but there's some go and meet Allah, he met. But does he meet him like how I meet you? No. Uh, not like that, uh, but different. <laughs> in a way, lah. that is the aqidah that they need to know. Uh, so that one is important. So that one, I will ensure understood. Right? Whether he knows, you know, what is qadi, baqi, mukhalifat, hawadis, qiyam, binafsihi, wahdaniya. Whether or not he understands what these things mean, later on I will explain to him. Right? But in a sense, he does not, if you ask him about these things specifically, he will tell you what is correct and what is wrong. Uh, in our uh, in in our belief system lah, right? So so in the sense, you the teacher must know what the the students need to know, and what they don't need to know, and they or the teacher also must know what ma- what the students are able to understand, and what they are not able to understand, and you need to know also that some subjects are not for everybody, right? So even Quran memorization, right? I don't push the kids. More than what they can do, right? So most of them they finish the ama, and then I let them decide. You want to continue memorizing, and you choose what you want to memorize, right? And some kids they just don't want to memorize more, right? Because they don't have the the, uh, the, the, the they don't have the maybe at the point uh, the ability for it, right? Maybe later on, or maybe this won't won't memorize, and it's okay. It's not it's not uh, far to I to memorize the Quran. Right? There are those who do, it and there are those who don't, right? So and it's okay. Right? Nahu same thing. Right, there are those who do it, and there are those who don't. Right, so for me, I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, I won't force Nahu on people. Right, but it is just if they want to learn it, learn it. Right, but I will not force it. If they want to learn Arabic, then you learn Arabic, and it's the vocabulary of Arabic, right, to answer the Quran. But Nahu, even the Arabs, there are those who don't answer Nahu. Right, it's, 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 it's all, it's all um, uh, knowledges that are tools. Right, they are tools, and regardless of how much you love the knowledge, right, so. Like for me, I love uh, Nahu a lot, right? But at the, at the end of the day, you have to see students, you know, what what are their abilities and and how important is the knowledge for them to actually understand, right? So there are great people who are born grammarians, right? They are they are they are into grammar, and there are those who are not, and that's okay, right? Grammarians, grammarians yeah. Why? I just learn a new word. Okay. Nahu people, alu Nahu. Allah, right? There are people who are like that, right? And in Arabic, is I mean, in Islam is called you know ilmul ala, right? It's a tools, not just the tools, but they don't, they they're not what is called to a Muslim, right? People can very well go through life not understanding any Arabic, and there are those who are like that, it's perfectly fine, right? And they can have of the highest taqwa. Right, and they will go through life. Not to say don't, don't learn it. I know you can learn it if you want to. Right? But it's in a sense, in a sense, put things where they are. You know, put things where they are. What is important? Right, so this, this point is very important. Kindness should be shown to students. Right? Don't force them on things where at the end of the day, you know, is it really important? 
right? But if let's say for example, forcing them on getting their fatiha right, uh, that is important. You need to get your fatiha right. You need to get your fatiha right. Right? That is important. Right? But thereafter, whatever they want, they can do, they do. You know. But what is important? Be a good person. I have good akhlaq. Uh, love Allah. Love the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, so as a teacher, you know you know what to what to uh, uh, stress on, and what not to stress on, and that's why previously we were just saying about adab. Right, adab is very very important. All lessons to stress on adab, right? As and much more than you would do on the subject matter itself, right? Unless the subject matter itself is about adab and about uh, your ibadah, right? And then you stress on it also. So kindness, eh? Like kindness towards uh, students and excuses for those who do not understand should be accepted, right? So it, uh, uh, don't be hard on uh, people. And you know, this is when it, when it, when it's talking about uh, religious knowledge. You know, what more knowledge is dunyawi? You know, so sometimes even as tutors, like you, for me, I really will just tell parents, you know, straight out, if your child is really not cut out for it, right? Don't don't force or not not cut out, no interest in it. Right, no interest in mathematics, no interest in sciences. Just because everyone else is in it, does not mean that he or she has to be in it. Especially if they are really dragging their feet through it. Right, there is no uh, interest whatsoever right, in this, and it's even hard for the teacher to teach them because he's like, I'm dragging her through it. You know, and and every time the paper comes back, it's all empty. It's all you know, like whatever you know. <laughs> Right, so of course in our society there is a minimum that they make us do, right, when it regards to all the subjects. Right, but thereafter you should really just you know you know what life, rezeki is already uh, determined and rezeki comes from many places and at this point in time in 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 a society you should know that rezeki is not dependent on your certification. <laughs> it's really not. It's really not. <laughs> right. Uh, subhanallah. Allah subhanallah gives rezeki. Right, so regardless of what is your certification, rezeki comes right, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You work hard and do things right. right so, <coughs> number 11, not to say to be, not to say to be complacent or whatsoever. Lah, right, but at the, at the end of the day, uh, with regards to stressing people out and pushing them to the edge. Because these are teaching methods for Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which are not, uh, you know, they are not observed in many teaching uh, situations. I, even by teachers, even by parents. And that is what is causing students to have breakdowns or students to, to kill themselves or students to maybe kill themselves inside right, or lose hope or just uh, uh, whatever lah, you know, that, that students go into right, because it does bring back to the teaching methods and sometimes it's not even the teacher who's doing it. It is the, the, the expectation you know, of society, of the system or whatsoever that is pushing them Right, to, uh, to, to depression or to anxiety or so whatsoever. And at the same time, the lack of teaching of how to handle stress. And so I, I strongly believe in that they are not taught how to handle anxiety, how to handle stress, how to handle depression, right, or how to handle disappointment. Right? It is not, it is not uh, uh, taught to these people. The string is whose string? You found it, right? There, right? I know it was there, right? I, it's my string. <laughs> yeah. Uh, strings are dangerous things. Yeah. Let's put it aside. Alright. So, number... So, don't stress people... In a sense, so, so what we're saying is that the teacher needs to be very aware... How to push and when to push. The teacher must be aware. That's why. That's why small classroom size is important. <laughs> the parents has to be aware because parents is, is is by default teachers. Then you must know when to push and how to push, and if it is necessary to push. Right. And 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 what are you like? What are you weighing against pushing? Like if their emotional health is at stake, their mental health is at stake. Right. Then you need to weigh lah. You know what is important. Right. And then, and then this. From the very beginning, there has to be, uh, it has to be taught. These things have to be taught. Negative emotions in the body, right, uh, has to be, you have to teach them from the very beginning how to handle it. And I actually go through it during parenting. 
right about keeping the child emotionally healthy right and this is taught from the very beginning and taught through islamic principles as uh, actually right so like anxiety right this entire thing that that will, will counter anxiety is tawakkul right you have to have more tawakkul right put in your effort and then rely on Allah, trust in Allah. Right, the entire Bismillahirrahmanirrahim addresses anxiety. Right, the whole Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, just, just the word Bismillahirrahmanirrahim addresses anxiety. Right, because Bismillahirrahmanirrahim means what? I depend and I rely and I turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by His name. He's the most merciful, He's the most, uh, uh, he is the most uh, gracious, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, so when you begin Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, everything. Right, so you say to yourself, I do my best, Allah will help me. And whatever is the, the outcome, let it be. You know, and this is, but this is a training, um, uh, is a mental training from a very young age. They have to think that way from a very young age. So don't, you know, don't, 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 don't stress, don't cry when you get things wrong. It's okay. Right? This kind of thing has to be taught from a very young age. So they don't actually grow up anxious, you know, or have anxiety attacks. Why are you having anxiety attacks? Why? Are you depending on yourself? Stop depending on yourself. Depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, did you try your best? Yes, you did. Alhamdulillah. Right, you know, in a sense, but it is these conversations that happen from very young. Right, from very young to teach them how to handle stress and depression and anxiety and disappointment. Right, so, so basically the entire teaching of emotional uh, management is something that really needs to be, you need to revisit, not revisit, you need to restart. <laughs> right, uh, emotional management uh, and teach people how to teach their children you know, how to emotionally manage themselves, right? And the problem is that, you know, because we already have adults who can't do it. <laughs> and these adults need to teach children how to do it. You know, so it's, it's a vicious cycle of more and more people unable to emotionally manage. Right? So you have adults who can't emotionally manage. So what happens when, you, when someone uh, criticizes you? And what do you do? Right? What happens when you, when, you, when you face failure? What happens when you face rejection? What happens, you know, like, like how do you handle these things? Right, so all of these things, you know, alhamdulillah for myself, my mother since we were young, she was she trained us on it. But it came naturally with the training of the religion. It came naturally. So it was it's already in our religion. The religion of Sharia is as as mentioned, you know, by many of our scholars, the Sharia preserves the physical, the emotional, the mental, the spiritual. It preserves all the way around. So many things in the Sharia actually addresses emotional issues. Many things. But if you go through the Sharia well, so not just fake, but you go through the tasawwuf, you go through you know uh, disease of the heart, you go through uh, the cures of the heart, and all of this entire thing which you find in Bir Hidayah is all there in the beginning of guidance when Ghazali puts it all there. It teaches people how to from a very young age, right, how to handle this because you notice from a very young age it's like a disease whereby if someone develops a physical disease at a very young age, if it's not addressed and allowed to continue till old age, then it's very difficult to try and reverse it, to try and cure it, right? So like something like, uh, 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 like obesity. Obesity even is a very good example. Right? If you allow someone to be severely obese, right, from a very young age, and, and you keep feeding that, feeding that, feeding that, when they grow old and they, beca- and they become severely obese, right, it's very hard to reverse. As opposed from a very young age, you control the food, you redirect them to what is healthy, you bring them out for physical activities, you, you, know, you, you make the body used to, to, to activity and make the body used to not having junk or not having snacks or having you know, good and nutritious food. The body begins to feed on that. Right? So in a sense, it's a training from a young age. So if it's a physical activity, it's like that. I mean, physical ailments are like that. So also emotional ailments. So from a very young age, right, they were unable to, man- to, to manage their emotions. Right? Start uh, teaching them how to manage it from a very young age by a lot of talk. Right? A lot of talk from a very young age whereby you, a lot of talk whereby you, 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 shape the, uh, the, you shape the mentality. So when bad things happen, the mind is trained to go there. And right? the mind is trained to, 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 to seek refuge. Right? The, the, the mind is trained to run to the prayer. The mind is trained to run and fight, fix six soles in Quran. And that is what Rasulullah Sallam did. I, one of his characteristics in Shamail, we know Shamail, one of his characteristics is that whenever he is disturbed, right, or whenever he is emotionally uh, triggered, right, he will run to the prayer and he will do his prayers. 
Right? That is a prophetic uh, solution. But you can't tell someone whose whole life they've not been doing it. And then now in adulthood, you're seeing them, you need to train yourself whenever you are stressed up to just slow it. To train yourself. It's true, it's correct. But they've not been trained only for many, many years. So when they go into stress, the first thing they do right, is self-bash from inside. Because that was how they were trained from a young age. So it's really, you know, the training has to start from a very young age. And then, but of course, it's not, not, not you know, gone case in their old and they can, you know, they, they can still change as to how someone who is severely obese can still, you know, uh, uh, get back to a healthy, healthy lifestyle. But it takes more struggle, right? And more breaking of very uh, uh, deeply ingrained habits. And they need to be uh, uh, addressed, right? And, and cleansed out of the body, right? So that all goes back to the teacher and the parent to identify, uh, to, to observe. That's why small <laughs> size classrooms <laughs> like, really, really help, you know, uh, because you, you see their character and you see what's going on with them, you see the stress that's going on with them, you see the areas that, re- that require more encouragement, right? you see the areas whereby it's really killing them inside, right? and then you don't let it go past you, right? because you, don't, you have the time to address it. Right? A lot of times teachers, they are forced to let it go past them because they don't have the time to address it. It's too many things on their plate right, to, uh, uh, to address. I said, Allah Huala, Allah knows best. So at the end of the day, you can't even blame the teachers because it's the parent on every child. Right? It's the parent's uh, uh, responsibility on every child. So, number 11, one should conceal one's faults even if these are part of his nature. We learn this from the instruction of Rasulullah SAW to the woman to apply perfume in order to remove the foul smell. This is a very interesting uh, lesson that is derived. Eh? Right, so anything that is ayin, anything that is, that is you know, um, even if it's natural, right, it's natural to have that smell. Right? Or any other faults in character, in speech, in behavior. Right? As far as you can, you know, in, in our world, you know, people will be like, you know, accept me for the way I am. You know, so even though you're, you're full of faults and full of bad character and full of, you know, whatever in, in, your, in, in yourself, it's all I, it's all faults. Right? But they say, you know, but this is the way I am. Accept me for the way I am. No, change the way you are. <laughs> right? Or at least don't go around being proud of it. You know, so you won't go around being proud that you have, uh, that you have odor coming out of you. Right? But you, you try your best to try and hide it. Don't say, oh, it's natural, what? You know, to have odor is natural. Yeah, it is natural to have odor, right? But you don't go around, you know, uh, uh, sharing with everybody else, <laughs> you know. And what is the sunnah is to smell nice, right? On top, uh, uh, also, you know, the way you speak. Right? So the way you speak also, there is a way of, there is good etiquette, there is bad etiquette. So you can't go around saying, oh, it's the way I am, you know. Or even if it's the way you were brought up. If it's wrong, it's wrong. Right? If it's wrong, it needs to be corrected. Right? And, 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 as far, and, and don't think, oh, I'm being hypocritical. Right, by by controlling my uh, my tongue in front of some people, and in front of some people, I don't control my tongue. Of course, the best you control your tongue in front of everybody, right? But the worst is that you let your tongue loose in front of everybody. <laughs> right, so I don't think you're being hypocritical, right? By at certain times, you you try to maintain etiquette. You know, like for example, people who don't wear the hijab when they go into the mosque, it is correct that they put on their hijab. It is correct. I guess I've heard some people say, "Oh, hypocrites!" You know, outside the mosque, they wear hijab. In the mosque, wear hijab. And right, it's wrong. It's the wrong idea, right? They are trying to, to respect the sanctity and the etiquette of the mosque. And that's good. When they come for majlis, when they come for dua salamat, when they come for, uh, sla- for, 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 for maulid or whatever, they put on their hijab. Even if it's sheer, even if it's loose around their head and whatsoever, they're putting on something to respect the majlis, right? And people are doing, you know, they're, they're, being, they're, they're not following the sunnah at all by commenting and saying, oh, hypocrites. I, outside you wear very revealing and down here you want to wear your, 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 your slindang right? let people wear what they can wear <laughs> right? and even if it's one thing that is good they can do do it right? if it's for one time do it right? why, why should people be uh, stopping people from doing even a, a shred of goodness right? anything that they're able to do let them do even if they come fully caked in makeup and whatsoever you know if they're coming alhamdulillah <laughs> you know, let them come Right, so, so this is what it is. Eh? So, so people should not uh, feel like, you know, because I have these faults, I should not pretend to be someone else. No, Rasulullah did say that if you, don't have, uh, if you don't have gentleness, then fake gentleness until you have it. 
you know, if you don't have uh, uh, humility, then fake humility until you have it. You fake it first. That means you force yourself on it. No, the, in fact, everything. <laughs> so even he said, when you read the Quran and you don't cry, then force yourself to cry. Read the Quran. Because, you know, you don't just say, oh, it's, it's not me, it's not me, it's not me. Until when it's not you. <laughs> so you need to, to these are prophetic, prophetic uh, teachings. That you don't have good character, force it. Right? No, it's not fake it, like, it's force it. You know, force it. Even though it's not you, force it. Until yourself, until one day, Alhamdulillah, may Allah have mercy on us, Allah gives us the good character that you're trying to force onto yourself. Right? So it, this is uh, uh, from point number 11. Eh? So of course, your faults that are there, don't bask in your faults. <laughs> right? And uh, don't you just, just show everybody your faults. Try your best to contain and manage your faults. Right? And it's not, it's not called being a hypocrite. Right? It's not. It's called being a human being who's trying. <laughs> right? it's, not, it's not at all hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is when you purposely, right, without trying, uh, show two face. Right, that is hypocrisy lah. It means you're not trying, but you're like you know, uh, Allahu alam, you know, whatever it is, is lah. Is it hypocrisy when you're doing something evil? You're doing that means that means you are showing a lot of goodness and then uh, with the intention of doing something evil thereafter, right? And, and you're not trying to stay away from the evil. Uh, so, so what we're talking about is people who are trying. Do you you identify what is in your character that is bad, and you're trying to rectify. Well, hypocrisy is you're still basking in your evil, right? But it's just that you know you you fake it from other people, right? You fake the goodness, and you're not trying to be good. It's a big difference. Right? It's a big difference, right? So so just someone has to fake one, try or you know uh, force it onto yourself. Let me talk. When answering embarrassing questions of this nature, a teacher should not address the student directly. In this context, Rasul said to her, only one of you should take. He didn't say you should take. This industrious additional etiquette in such situations. This is what we mentioned last week, right, whereby uh, if you ask questions that are embarrassing, right, then it is on you to go third person, right, not second person. So, so, so you know, some people, and you will find in the hadith, he will say some people, or what's with a people? You know who do such and such, and he goes third person. Right? so he's not not to directly address the person uh, who is doing it. Number thirteen, the noble character of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the greatest teacher, his grand status, and the extent of his modesty are apparent. May Allah increase him in honor and status. Um, so this hadith, you see so much about how great a teacher he is. His very refined character, uh, his modesty in, 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 in handling women who are come to him to ask him questions. Okay, number 36. Additional attention to teaching and admonishing women. And this is the way of Rasulullah Islam is the way of the righteous. They always have lessons right, put aside specifically for women. Because what always happens is that these women, they always get sidelined and the men always occupy the front rows. And they get the closest uh, vicinity towards the teacher. <laughs> right, so Rasulullah Islam showed in his own sunnah that he gave them uh, time right, for, uh, for himself and he will address them, he will address them right, uh, during his khutbah. So Rasulullah will pay, will pay particular attention to teaching essential matters to women. He used to have special lectures and gatherings for them. Right? Because they once came to him and, uh, and they once complained to Rasulullah saying that, you know, the men have time with you and we don't have time with you, so put aside, aside for us time with you. And he did that. Once a week, he would have time with the woman. And Habib Ali Mashhur uh, in Tarim, he would have his lessons twice a week, specifically for women. He would sit there and his mahram woman would sit in front of him and he would teach them but his voice is broadcasted all over the Rufaqi. Right? So he would sit in front of the mahram and he would look at them and teach them. You know, and then it is broadcasted everywhere. So you know how they so they had their jalsa with women and at the same time they they maintain the modesty, you know, of no interaction. Yeah, the women are not seen by him. Not seen by him at all. I used to go to his classes and they would come in, you will see his back and you will see all of his mahram in front of him. <laughs> but his bed is towards you <laughs> right, and then you just go and sit uh, at the hall next to it but it, it's broadcast yeah. 
so you can see. But now the technology is much easier also. You know, the men just have to teach the men and the woman can be listening from somewhere else. Uh, but of course, interaction, if they want to ask questions and everything, and that is when uh, racism also would allow for them to ask questions. Right? In our time, we have female teachers. Right? So you can just ask the questions towards the female, uh, to female teachers. So in this hadith, Rawa Bukhari, Rawa Bukhari wa Muslim wa lafzu lahu an ibn Abbasin radiyallahu anahuma yaqul ashadu ala rasulil uh, ashadu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la salla salat al-aidi qabla al-qudbati qala thumma khataba faraa anahu lam yusmi'u lam yusmi'u lam yusmi'u lam yusmi'u فأتاهن فذكرهن ووعزهن وأمرهن بالصدقة وبلال وبلال باسط سو باسط سوبه فجعلت امرأة تلقي خاتم وال والخرص والشيء. زين بخاري وموسى نريد on the authority of Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنه said I bear witness that Rasulullah Sallam performed the Eid prayer before the khutbah. And he's bearing witness because for Friday prayers, the khutbah is first and then the prayer. Right, but for Eid prayers, the prayers are first and the khutbah. Right, so he's bearing witness to show right, that you know I'm very sure of this. <laughs> I'm very sure that for Friday prayers, it is khutbah and then prayer. Right, and then, but for Eid prayers, it is prayer and then khutbah. Right, so he bore witness for this part. And then he said he delivered a sermon and he being aware of the situation. And so again, as a teacher, you must be aware of your students. Are they hearing you or not? So he was aware, he realized that he was not loud enough to enable the woman to hear. So what did he do? He, he repeated his entire khutbah. He went to them and he did another khutbah in front of them. Right? Because from where he was at, the man was in prayer. The men were a lot right? in, in rows in front of him. There were a lot of men. Right, so he, so his voice did not reach the woman, I, uh, all the way at the back. Right, so after the khutbah, he went to the woman and then he delivered the sermon again to the woman, right? And he reminded them and he admonished them, right? And he ordered them to do charity, and Bilal had a cloth spread out, and the woman began throwing their earrings and earrings and other items of charity into the claw, and that shows with some specific uh, focus on the women that were at the back. So. For, for our for our time, the extension of this is that for students who like to sit at the back, right, sit very far away from a teacher, right, teacher, the adult is actually if there is space in front, they must come front, right. So teacher needs to keep saying to the students how many times or so, keep saying it, come forward, come forward, come forward, and it is adapt for students that when you come into a class to occupy what is in front. Right, to occupy as close as possible to the teacher so more people can come in. And also, you know, in, in our society whereby you sometimes you have chairs that are in rows, that are in auditoriums or whatsoever, to go in. I right, don't sit at the at the outside. You know, it's very it's annoying. Right? But really, you know, people come and then they have to, to, to go past you to get to a seat that's on the inside. Right? So it's being considerate. Like go in, go front, you know, occupy, fill up. Right, so more people can come in and they can easily sit from uh, wherever they are at. Uh, of course, it is to exclude people who have children and babies that you need to exit quickly. Right? So that one, if you take the, 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 the last row or if you take the end seat, that's understandable lah, because you have children, you know, you have to handle to your children. Right? Uh, but for those who are not, you know, for me, I will really go. <laughs> I will say to the, to the students, move in, come forward, don't sit so far away. <laughs> It's all, all the etiquettes eh, of, of this. So, but for Rasulullah Islam, what happened to him was that, so for this to do that, to that first, but if the teacher realizes that, uh, that the, his voice could not be heard all the way at the back, right, then at first you should actually ensure and ask the students, right, can you hear me from where you're at? Uh, ensure that they can hear you. Right? The mic is clear in our time. Lah. For Rasulullah Islam, he because of the situation in, the, in that time, right, he actually went and delivered a sermon again for the woman at the back. From this hadith, we learn that it is commendable to lecture to women, to remind them of the hereafter about the injunctions of Islam, and to urge them and give in charity. This is recommended if there is no fear of an ev- of any evil or temptation for the person delivering the lecture, 
those who to whom the lecture is delivered and others all right so the condition of a man speaking to woman is on condition that there is no fitna there has to have the condition there is no fitna there all right so there is no attraction right there is no uh, uh temptation there is no chance to commit sin there is no khalwat right there is no uh whatever lah you know lack of adab or whatsoever right so if this is all 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 guarded over then it is uh fine i right, for them to do so right, but you will see that the habaib when they come and they teach a woman they will always have one man there in the gathering who is a translator right, and they will talk to the man <laughs> right, they will speak to the man directly and they don't actually uh make eye contact with any woman right, they might glance around to give uh you know, to show respects right uh, to the women who are there but then they will just focus on the face of the uh, translator <laughs> who is translating for him right? most of them would they, they will do that right and that is the uh, the adab of it as much as now habib ali mashhur he will teach a woman and he will have his mahram uh with him and the rest of the women will be in another room i right? or in the next hall i right? or they will bring those who are, who are the men they put them in front and they will speak to the men or their mahram will be in front and they will speak to their mahram right so then they will not look further than that right so it's basically it's, it's all the ways of uh the ways of uh of 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 guarding over chastity and uh uh chastity, chastity and modesty right it's known that there is a story la sad story la whereby whereby uh ustads right get involved with other ustads wives right because of the lack of barrier Oh, then there are stories of that, right? Uh, in our society, right? So because of why? Because of lack of adab, lack of barrier, right? So the moment they exchange numbers, uh, the moment they begin chatting, right? all of these things are all red, red light, ah, uh, red alert, right? When when they begin doing this and they are texting each other unnecessarily, right? Then there is the the radar up, ah, uh, you know. But people with with taqwa have taqwa, and those with no taqwa have no taqwa, right? So it says here, uh, Mr. Muhammad, uh, it is recommended that if there is no fear, uh, so, so another lesson that we can learn from this hadith is that if women attend the prayers and gatherings of men, they should be separated from them so that there is no fear of any temptation, gazing at each other and having evil thoughts. I uh, think it's best that lessons uh, uh, are fully men or fully women at best. But if not, if it's mixed up, then there should be a very clear separation, right? So that people are not distracted by the ones next to them, right? And if actually, in fact, you know, when uh, Sheikh Musab he was here, right? His wife was here also with me, uh, uh, and and she commented to me, right? When she went to one of the gatherings, I won't say where, but she went to one of the gatherings whereby the men and women were side by side, right? Uh, and we're all young, young men, young women. Uh, but not side by side in the sense, but they, but the whole section here is all men, and the whole section here is all women. Right? And she was asking me, why must they do that? Why can't they do men in front, women behind? Right? Because if it's like side by side like this, you want to go to your seat, you walk in front of all the men to get to your seat, like in a way. Huh? And, and the men have to go up the stage. They have to pass by the women and they go up. Yeah, yeah. So is it? So she was like, she was very uncomfortable. Like she was saying, like, why can't all the men be in front, women behind? The mic was loud enough, right? Right, the mic is loud enough. Everybody can hear. Right, everybody can hear the she in front. Uh, because she also was like, you know, because her husband is the one teaching. <laughs> and she was like, all the men are staring at my, all the women are staring at my husband. Because uh, she moves up like in front. Right, so she, so she's like, why are all the women in front there? You know, all giving my my husband iron. <laughs> just like, all giving him iron. They should all be at the back. And so he's always sick because they they keep giving him iron. You know, so she has like, uh, but it's true. I mean, there is there is a reality to it. Because I I know so Zainab same thing also. You have your Hashim, right? She she was like, you know it. You know what? I can teach you. Let me teach you. <laughs> you know, and why you want to talk to my husband so much? You know, I when if you need anything, I can go and talk to him for you. Right? You know, <laughs> you you hear it specifically from women whose husbands are preachers and they are handsome. Uh, they are actually good-looking preachers. Right, so they will say, you know, can the woman go towards the back? Right, can you not sit in? because they see in the eyes of the woman, right, that they are staring at these uh, preachers. So the nearer you are to the person speaking, the stronger the eye. Is it? No, no. Is it? No, is it that the nearer, nearer you are, the better, the the better the. 
the the the, the view. Then the income. Yeah, and then the better view, and the more you can observe and look at the jungle and look at the, you know, the, the eyebrows and look at the way he speaks and the way he's. Eye the further color. you are, the eye color. <laughs> the way the further you are, you just see a, like a like a like a like, like a figure. <laughs> you don't actually see all the way down into the the details of the person's face. Right, which I thought is very quick to come in and, and quick to manipulate, you know, and to make people uh, uh, desire other people's husbands, you know, in, in a way. Like it's, and it happens, and it has happened, and it is happening, you know, it's still happening, right? And that's why there is this adab, right? So, so for me, I so agree with her. I was like, actually, I agree with you. I don't think there is a need for a woman to be next to the man side by side, right? Even though they're, they're separated, you know, and there's, there's, a, there's an alley in between, why must they? Right? Why must they? Why, why can't they just be behind? Right? It doesn't make you lesser to be behind at all. Because in the prayer, you don't pray side by side. You know, in a sense, if, if they say the Imam is there, you don't pray the woman here and the man here. Could it be clearer to see that? Why you want to see? No, 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 no. no. Like, um, how to say it? Like, uh, more, more senses are engaged when the, when the, when the What senses? <laughs> you see, you see, I know, I know, more senses and then, and then what senses will, will be engaged? Can you block, can you block the senses from other form of visual, visual senses? So the eyes is the first door to the, to the heart. The eyes, are the, is, is, the eyes are the arrows of the devil, right? So in a sense, you open one door, many things go through. <laughs> So while you want to learn like that, learn how to le- learn how to, to learn by by listening. And in fact, you can just see from far. And you don't have to look into the face. You can just you can. It takes training, right, to do that, and it's it's much better. And if you really need to see someone's face, then go for a woman's class. So you say you can protect your heart. Yeah. Like show the. Look at your book. <laughs> <laughs> look at your notes. No, but like it's you're so used to it. Yeah, look, it was here, hear what he's saying. Don't stare right into his face. Unless you are very sure that there is no, uh, like there is no fitna. Like for example, a very old Habib. Uh, so you see him, you know, the most you will ever see is a grandfather, you know, in front of you. Yeah. Right, but young preachers. Uh, young, this is where the fitna comes in, young preachers. Ah, uh, the screen, of course, you don't see anything. Uh. Or, or the screen on the... On a, on the yeah, even yeah. then, I will lower my gaze. Oh, yeah. that was like, oh. Even then, I will lower my gaze. Because, I mean, a uh, uh, screen is still... It goes into the eyes. It goes into oh, the heart. Oh. You know, so it affects even, even the person. Even looking at the screen of Habib, the But he's an old person, so he's an old man. <laughs> so, like, for me, so it, it, it's, you must see, you know, does, does it come to your mind? And so here. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, does mind. it come to your mind? No, right, like, but... But 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 uh, so so when you look at, at Habib, you see okay, Munawar, you know, mm. so much light. Uh, so you don't think like oh handsome here. Yeah. He's, he's a handsome looking young man, <laughs> you know that kind of thing. I wish with some of the preachers you might get it to your head. Mm. Uh, he's so handsome. But in your uh, heart, in so your heart lah. Like, I mean, so straight away, straight away, there's an indication to you to lower your gaze. I uh, lower your gaze, right? But if you are just admiring the light, that's from the face and not the handsomeness, right? Yeah. And that one, I would say, older preachers, right? The older preachers, right? Not, not the, not the young, handsome, you know, uh, good-looking ones, <laughs> right? Now you just look. Yeah. And if you find yourself, no, I still must look. Then that one is a very clear indication that you're looking for some other reason. <laughs> no, I want to just, you know, feast my eyes. <laughs> yeah. But she, she, she mentioned it to me. She was like, you know. Like, can you tell them? Let's say, I don't, I'm not in charge. <laughs> like, it's not, yeah, she I told know. Me she, she wished she was wearing her niqab. Yeah, she yeah, she, because she was wearing niqab, right? But she said she wished she had niqab because this, she felt, and she's from you, the UK, mm. from the UK. She felt that it was too close. Uh, it was too close. The men were right there and we were right there, and she felt it was too close. Right? And they need to uh, have a bit more barrier. Right? But she, I mean, as from, from, from the UK, Allah Alam. So, society. The UK, UK. How come the UK people can can see? It? Maybe the circle that she's in. Like our society, I don't think. Yeah, but then, oh, 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 but the circle that we are in are, are those who go for Shemus up top. No, but Shemus up, he had a, a book. Uh, you know, I remember the men was in front, the woman was back. 
there was one month space yeah there was always where she one she she or oh, she really complained to me <laughs> she yeah, was like can you do like, something about it was like it? an auditorium the auditorium already separated the seats at one side here one side here so they mm. put that all the men on one side all the women on one side uh. and then they saved her seat right in front so uh. she got the front seat so and the men have to walk all the men to go up on the stage have to walk in front of the woman to go on the stage uh. so Habib Abdullah <laughs> Oh all the, no. Oh, Abdullah was there. They all had to walk in front of us. Subhanallah. So, like, yeah. everyone was, for me, I didn't know what to say. I was just like, yeah, Habib. <laughs> Come on, sorry. Habib Abdullah was so young. Habib? 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 Abdullah Idrus, I think Abdullah. No, 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 no,
right? Uh, and get involved with someone who doesn't know, doesn't know the religion, then they have a lot on them to actually do <laughs> on their part, uh, because they are the the one who's pulling them in, what? Right? <laughs> in a way, in a sense, lah. Right? But uh, in 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 that situation, lah. So for me, I know there was once, uh, there was there was a series of class whereby the men and women were mixed up, and I think for this reason, right? Because there were a lot of uh converts there also. Right, that they allow people to sit anyhow, um, and what happened was that, and I was there in that class at first. Initially, I would go for the class because they would separate men and women again side by side. Right, uh, this was years ago, and then after a while, I realized that because they were allowing partners to sit together, right, even though one of them is Muslim or not Muslim, the Muslims began doing it also, because they see, eh, how come men and women can sit together? So they all sit together. So they came as friends, uh, undergraduates or whatsoever. They came as friends, and then they would sit. All in one row, men and women like as if it's like, like an NUS lecture, but it was actually a uh, Islamic lecture. Right? But it was all over the place. So in a sense, like like you lower a uh, a standard, then everybody yeah. else also like they also happily uh, start to mix around, you know. But what is recommended is that you uh, you maintain the standard and then you educate, educate, maintain the standard, educate. And after a while, you realize it's not that bad. <laughs> it's really not that bad. You know, maybe the first few times, because it's the unknown, you're fearful. But in the first few times, you 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 go through the pool. I mean, you need to walk through the pool a few times to get used to the pool, right? In a way, right? So in a sense, yeah. So for me, like I would I would just say educate, educate, or get someone who's going to to pair up, you know, go go through the motions, lah. Because also, uh, the angels. Right and uh, them coming to the majlis, right? So if there is a lot of free mixing in the majlis, Allahu alam, right? But that is one of the things that angels shy away from, uh, free mixing. Uh, so that means you want to prioritize the coming, which eventually he'll teach them anyway, right? <laughs> he'll teach them the etiquette, etiquette also anyway. So slowly lah, slowly but but gently teach the etiquette. Alright, uh, what's saying, Muhammad? Like another lesson that can be learned from this hadith is that if women attend prayers, okay, we have done that 130. So they want to get a bit to the pages, eh? How many ways supposed to do? Five. Oh, Allah. <laughs> Next Tuesday, got class, eh? Yeah, I know. <laughs> but next Tuesday, I'm still here. <laughs> No, leaving that day. And night, yeah, yeah. So, oh, you're leaving on Tuesday, not yeah? Wednesday night? No, Tuesday night. Oh, yeah. But I'm leaving at 9 pm. It's time, inshallah. I pack very fast. <laughs> I pack the day itself. I don't bring much many things. Uh, yeah, lah. Tuesday itself, eh. Okay, we see how we can. We're already 3 o'clock. <laughs> okay, the next hadith is Rawal Bukhari, wa Muslim, wa Lafzu, Minhuma. عن أبي سعيد الخدري رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قالت النساء للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم غلبنا عليك الرجال فاجعل لنا من نفسك يوما نأتيك فيه نعلمنا تعلمنا مما علمك الله قال اجتمعنا يوم كذا وكذا فاجتمعنا فأتاهن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فعلمهن مما علمه الله ثم قال ما من كنا من رأة تقدم بين يديها من ولدها ثلاثة إلا كانوا لها حجابا من النار فقالت امرأة واثنين 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 قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم واثنين 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 right uh, رواه uh, Imam uh, Bukhari wa Muslim Imam Bukhari Imam Muslim narrate on the authority of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu anhu who said the woman said to Rasulullah sallam the men have surpassed us in coming to you right, that means they have they've overcome us they are taking up all the space I right, know the Arabic ghalabana right, they, they they took up all the space and they they are they're hogging you like they're they're hogging you Right, they don't. They don't let us come to you, <laughs> but they're always there, right? And it's true. They're always, you know, hogging. But how in our time, we have uh, like hababas, you know, and uh, sheikhs and ustazas and female scholars to 
to run to. And as one of my teachers said to us that, you know, uh, women will complain that everybody gets to be close to the sheikh or to the habib. No, the men, the men get to be close and the women don't. And then, and then she said that, you know what, at least we get to see the habaib and the, and, and the, the mashaykh. The men don't even get to see these great hababas that are out there and these great masha- uh, the sheikhahs and these great ustazahs that are out there. They will never see them. Right, so at least we get to see both sides, you know. <laughs> right, they get to see one side, they can't see the other side. They see all these amazing women who are like gems in their rooms, you know. SubhanAllah, they'll never meet them. <laughs> SubhanAllah. Right, so like, like if you imagine the likes of Sayyidina Aisha, right, Allah on her. Right, you know, like a man would never see her face. Right, but the woman got to. And uh, the likes of, you know, to, to interact with the, the wives in the Sayyidina Fatima Zahra, you know, like. Like the men, the women get to see all the Sahaba. <laughs> when the Sahabiyah, they see the Sahabiyah only. Right, not Sahaba. So Imam Bukhari and Muslim Nayyan and Abu Ghudri said, The men have surpassed us, or they, they have, they have, in a sense, they have, they have overcome us in coming to you. So set aside a day for us only. Right, the men are not to come. Right, so that we could learn from you what Allah has taught you. And the some saw it as a valid request and he uh, gave it to them. Gave it to them. This is why till today you will find uh, the mashayikh and the habaib, they will always have lectures specifically for the women. They always do it, right? To follow the sunnah of a sallallahu alayhi wa to do so. Right, so he did that and then he said, you all, gather on such a, you all gather on such and such a day and I will come and I will teach you. So the woman gathered on that day and Rasulullah uh, went to them and taught them from what Allah has taught him. He then said to them, if any of you women have three children, they will be a shield for her from the hellfire. Meaning, three who passed away. That's what he means, eh? Three who passed away before puberty, three. So a woman said, what about two, what about two, what about two? Right, because she had two, but not three. You know, but it's still painful, right? And Rasulullah said, two as well, two as well, two as well. Right, there's another narration whereby saying, uh, another woman says, what about one? And he said, one also. <laughs> right, because you know, they, 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 they lost children. And then, uh, and the, the, the narration was that, that they will come and they'll be intercessors for them. On the day of judgment. And then Sayyidina Aisha was there. Sayyidina Aisha said, Ya Rasulullah, what about none? Mm. Uh, <laughs> Sayyidina Aisha. He said, Why we have no children? What about none? And then he said, And I will be the intercessor on the day of judgment. And then he said, uh, So you see how he, he <laughs> guts over the, the feelings of all of them. So three, if you only had two, okay, two also. Only had one, okay, one also. I have no children. <laughs> right, okay, then I will be your intercessor on the day of judgment. <laughs> Where does it say that? Huh? Where does it say that? It's, no, you have to go to Shara to know it. Mm. <laughs> so you must read Hadith by Shara. It's in the Shara. It's not here. It's, it's in the Shara. Not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, uh, in the Hadith itself, you can't see. But what, that's what it means. Lah. Right. Uh, it says die here, this part. Any of you... So in the Arabic, you see in the Arabic, مَا مِنْ كُنَّ مِنْ مْرَأَةٍ تُقَدِّمُ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهَا تُقَدِّمُ that means to put forth. Which means to die before her. Uh, that is the Arabic part. Uh, that means it means they die. Uh, they die before her. Min waladiha, right? Salah satan. Right. So that means, it says she gave forth three, uh, three children. That is in the Arabic. Eh? So the, the English, it is uh, any of you. They say have three children, but but you know. Um, yeah. The the Arabic says put forth, uh, put forth before her. Okay. We'll take one more hadith just to see where we can reach. 38. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. <laughs> you know, I'll just read through, no? I'll just read through the hadith. <laughs> actually, actually, Tuesday, next Tuesday. No khatam on Tuesday. No Tuesday is a khatam. So, do we still have lessons on Tuesday? Yes, Tuesday still. Can I cover? So then the PM is just going through the book. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, in that case, yeah, yeah, 9 p.m. I got it. 9 p.m. Thursday, Thursday, Thursday is 9 30 to go do more pages. Then next Tuesday is our khatam. Inshallah. 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 Try to get it. Eh? Right and, and, and just nice, uh, next Tuesday is the last day of Rabbil Awal. Inshallah. <laughs> yeah. I checked it. I was trying to find where's the last day of Rabbil Awal next Tuesday. So the khatam will be on the last, I think it's last day or the second, second last day. Last or day the day. Na- night is last night. Wednesday is the last day. Are you sure? Oh, last night. Last night. Uh, oh, the last night is night. there. Malam of the uh, Yes. Uh, it's a nice. Then nice I can khatam the book of hadith. 
her in your good hour inshallah and we're doing a khatam musod uh, of the chama and trying to aim for this day see how lah i know whether we can aim for that or not if not it will continue after i leave and do on a khatam mm. <laughs> so this khatam eh can can i used to have the arabic book but i give all my arabic books away i had the arabic book of this uh, yeah yeah I had it from Syria, but then I give it to my teachers in Tari. Because I had the English, I was okay, like, I give them. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, I'll buy a new one. <laughs> Not buy a new one. <laughs> I buy, becoming angry if the situation demands for it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam become very angry if a student transgressed by delving or questioning about a matter which was beyond the limits. <laughs> Right, so did he become angry? Yes, he became angry in the rights when the rights of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala or other people are being violated. Right, never on his own account. Right, Allah or other people. Hadith hundred thirty one. Rawa ibn Majah an Amr ibn Shu'ib an Abihi an Jaddihi Abdullah Abdul an Jaddihi Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Al As radiyallahu anhu ma qal. خرج رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم على أصحابه وقم يقتصمون في القدر فكأنما يق فأن فكأنما يفقع في وجهه حب الرمان من من الغضب فقال بهذا أمر بهذا أمرتم أو لهذا خلقتم تضربون القرآن بعضه ببعض بهذا هلكت بهذا هلكت الأمم قبلكم بهذا هلكت أمم قبل قبلكم قال فقال عبد الله بن عمر ما 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 غضب ما غضبت نفسي بمجلس بمجلس تخلفت فيه عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما غبطت نفسي بذلك المجلس وتخل وتخلف عنه إمام ابن ماجه رضي الله عنه نريد أن أطلب من أمر بن شعيب from his father from his grandfather عبد الله بن عمر بن العاص رضي الله عنه who said رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم came to the Sahaba while they were disputing about predestination. That means they're talking about things that does not concern them, and that is a very clear indication for us on how do you approach the topic of predestination. We believe in predestination. We believe in the qadr, we believe in the qadr of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and we believe this because necessarily so that you believe Allah knows everything, and is not time bounded. Uh, that is our aqidah. You believe that. So it is not for us to delve into the issue of prestige, to figure out how does it work, how does choice and and destiny work. It's not for us to figure it out. All all for you to figure out is right. You're right now. You're right now. You have a choice: pray or don't pray. You have a choice: drink or don't drink. You have a choice: you know, uh, sleep or wake up. You know, every moment of your day, you have a choice, and you make your choice. So it's not for you to delve into the issue or the, the domain of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's Allah's domain, not your domain. Right? So Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got, got, got angry because this kind of talk has led people in our time to leave the religion. Right? By them just obsessing about the question of destiny and personation and the qada and the qadar and whatsoever. Right? And they delve into it and then they, the shaitan will, will, will come in there and he will mess things up for them. And this is why Rasulullah Sallam got very angry, right? To show them you're really on the red line, right? Don't go there. Right? This is where kufr can happen, and it has happened right, uh, to people when they go into matters that does not concern them. It is on lost matters, right? So he got angry, and then he became so angry. He said he became so angry that it was as though pomegranate seeds were bursting open on his face, meaning that he became very red. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam became very red. And the reason why he became angry because they were, they, in a sense, they were playing with fire right, by talking about this issue. And it was also to, to drive forth to them, you don't ask about these things. You don't go there. Because it's not your, your hand. 
and it's not a situation, it's not your, 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 your business. And in fact, you can't, figure, you can't understand it also. Right? It's beyond your understanding what is what exactly, you know, position and, and, and free will and whatsoever. Right? All you know is your now. So act on your now. And right? that is what you know. So he said, is this what you have been ordered to do? Right? Have you been ordered to figure out presentation? Is it on your account? Right? Or have you been created for? Right, you know, to quote one, one portion of the Quran against another. Right, this is why he got angry because they were using the Quran to argue. Oh, this is why he, re- he nipped it in the bud. You don't do that. Don't do this ever. Right, from the Sahaba to the end of time, don't do this. Don't use the Quran to fight with each other like that. Right, so then he says, you know, it was, it was because of this that nations before you were destroyed. Right, to, to show why he got angry. You know, you, you all are really, really, you're, you're, you're really on, you're playing with fire. And he's playing with fire. And that's how a teacher should do. When, when, when students go into an area whereby it's really dangerous to go in there, right, uh, or they, 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 their minds delve into things that is really, they should not delve into, you should stop them there and there, don't go there. Right? And then also explain to them the danger. Right? So that's what he did here. He said, nations before you were destroyed by doing this. And of course, you can go further and say that there is no benefit in this. This is not what you were created to do. You were created to worship, worship. Now, you're not created to figure out the world. And I've met people who like, you know, they left Islam because they see all this uh, evil in the world and they say that there is no God. But you're not created to figure out this part. It's, this is on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, uh, to handle the evil, the... the the oppressors, the whatever is going on, you disbelieving does nothing to the situation, <laughs> right? I mean, they say, oh, happening in Palestine, happening in Gaza, happening in in Rohingya, happening in you know, why doesn't God do anything? How do you know God's not doing anything? And how do you know? You just was you, your perception. How do you know that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is not doing a lot for them in the next world? How do you know, right? So, and by that disbelief in Islam. You know, and then does it does it stop the, the evil? The evil stop in any way in this belief? There are some you know in the sense that they just they're going they're, they're, they're going into things that is dangerous, and he's guiding them to not go there. And because of the kind of anger that he showed, right, so that they will never forget this lesson. Sayyidina Amr Abdullah bin Amr said, I was never pleased with myself by be, uh, being absent from any assembly of Rasulullah Islam than I was with the, my absence from that assembly. <laughs> he was, so he was narrating on a, uh, 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 on a third person uh, narration. Right? He heard from other Sahabas that this happened. He was, I'm so happy I was not there. <laughs> I was so angry. <laughs> and I was not one of those who was you know, arguing. Because like, in the sense, you will say to yourself, and like when a teacher, when the teacher comes into the class and there are people arguing, and then you came late, oh, I'm like, okay. because if I had come early, I've engaged in the argument also. <laughs> I also be arguing with them, right? and I'll be also be punished also. But so just so by by my by chance, you know, I came late. <laughs> right? In a sense, you know, I was absent. The word the words it was as though pomegranate seeds were burst open on his face alluded to the intense redness of the face, at the time of extreme anger. The reason for Rasulullah's anger was that Sahaba delving into the concept of presentation, which is for, from the mysteries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Delving into such matters is prohibited. You can't go into this kind of things. It's not your business. I especially things that people say, who is in hell, who is in heaven. That's Allah's business. Allah will handle who's in heaven, who's in heaven. I heard people saying, you know, it, uh, or some ancestors are in the hellfire, not in heaven, or whatever. Like, you know, as if you're on some throne in paradise, dictating who's in hell, who's in heaven. Like, you know, who are you? Just care about your own, you know, uh, and your family's uh, uh, ending, you know, and your, your, your hal right now. It's not for you to go and discuss all these things that doesn't do anything for your akhirah. In fact, it could lead you uh, to even a worse situation in the question. Then guide them with some guide them. Right? What is on you? It's not on you to figure out these things. And in the, in what we can't even figure it out. It's not given to us. This knowledge we are not able to encompass and comprehend. Right. Why is he doing here? 
Oh, who's that? Me, right? Scared. <laughs> <laughs> With a lot of hustle. Then I thought a white monster appeared on behind me. <laughs> 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 Saw my face. Your <laughs> face went through yeah. full fear. <laughs> It's amazing how agile he is, <laughs> considering his size. <laughs> he's agile, he's agile, but he's huge. <laughs> what was the question? So, like, example question, example question. Example. Um, you know, God, uh, God already know who goes to heaven to heaven. Uh, why, why must I play this game? And then, you know, uh, so my Where? state, my current state, is Allah planned it. Allah knows. Allah planned it. Like, yeah. Mean, Basically, this is what I'm saying. Does it does it benefit you having these questions? So no. So why must I try? You because I you are told to try. The instruction. You see, you see. What is your business? Your business is to do as you're told. That is your business. Your business is not to figure out what's in the future. You will not be told until the future comes. <laughs> right. So you want to say, you know, it's all written. Do you know what was written? No. Do you know what you're told to do? Yes. Do that. There's no benefit. You see, it's, it's, it's all that I'm playing. There's no benefit saying, you know, what if I'm of some of the hellfire? Then I'm praying all for nothing. What if you're not? <laughs> okay. What if you're someone of, the, of paradise? They say, oh, what if I'm someone of paradise? Then if I don't pray, then, then I'll go paradise anyway. But what if you're of some of the hellfire? <laughs> you know what? what? What do you know? You know what, what you're being told. You're being told, pray, pray. Right, you know those who don't pray, they get punished. Right, don't be that person. Uh, basically, so okay. you do what you know. You don't you don't delve into things that you have no idea about. Then the also also the common question also. Uh, uh, why why am I um, you know uh, let's say you have a bad father or something like that, very bad father. That's in life. So. Why me? Why why do I get it? Why do you get Everyone has their own test in life. Everybody has their own test and this happens to be your test. Right? Why don't you say to yourself, why why that person get cancer? Why not me? Now ask that question. Right. I mean I mean in a sense. Right. To be fair, you're gonna ask why him and why not why me and why not him? So why him and why not me? I mean, it's, it's never ending. There are many things that happen to people in life. <laughs> it's never ending. So, you know what? It's a test. Don't so, don't go there. Don't and even asking doesn't stop the test. <laughs> yeah. So, how do you close that door? How do you close that door on people who are... They keep in stride. What does the religion say to you? How do you, uh, how do you, how do you face tests? So, go to the guidance. The guidance says what? Things come to you. Bad things happen. What do you do? Seek Allah's help. Go into prayer. Give sudaka. Right, that's what you can do. Questioning and asking does nothing to the test and to yourself. In fact, it makes you further from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the form of deeds of the heart. Right. Right. The question, question, question. The, it doesn't stop the father from being what he is. You can question all you want and you can be upset with God for giving you what he gave you. It will not stop him. <laughs> so he says, it's a form of, it's a form of foolishness. That shaitan makes people go into to distract them from the real work. There's real work to be done. Right? But shaitan makes people, you know, delve into things that's none of their business nor in their control. And what is in their control they don't they don't they don't address. So what's in their control? To have tawakal. There's a control to have uh to have taqwa. What's in your control? Right, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's in your control? Right, to cleanse your heart of diseases. What's in your control? It's all this in your control. Right, that you that Allah give you the ability to, to get into. The what, what you can do, you don't want to do. And what you have no what you can't do, you want to do. <laughs> do what you know and do what you're in control of. Yeah, and what you what you are commanded on. Where did he go? Did he come back? <laughs> yeah, he's going there. I think so. Or maybe he's going there now. I don't know what he wanted. He went there, he came there. Okay, alright, it's gonna uh, finish it off. Eh? Right, so uh, so without questioning the hidden wisdoms, so delving in such methods is prohibited. Eh? Prohibited. Eh? Those who delve into these methods could easily slip from the path. That's why it's prohibited. This is one of the very open doors to kufr. 
you, you direct no you answer in directing the mind the the, the 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 mind how do you think so you go from the way of common sense right so this is what, what i was doing just now like you tell them how does it help you asking these things right uh, do you know allah's promise allah's promise is what you do good you obey him you believe in him paradise is yours that is what you know do you know if you're going to be one of these people you don't know try then make it practical logical right because these kind of questions are actually very irrational questions and 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 in a sense foolish because it helps nobody and it puts people to kufur and he has done so i met a few people who are like they are on the brink of of mutad because they go into these kind of things the person was very angry about it you know start of super class today Uh, the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are commanded to accept whatever the sharia orders without questioning the hidden wisdoms. This is a very important uh, concept. Eh? You accept it because you trust Allah only commands what is good for you in all aspects and you understand that you are human being and you are limited in your understanding of a lot of things. And you have to have a humility to obey the creator of the heavens and the earth and what he has said. All right. We're going to stop there inshallah for today. Tak ingat mau pipri. All right. Sis. 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 وما شيخنا والزاوين الشرطف علينا وإلى حاضة النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لك الفصر الذين آمنوا وصلحا وصلحا سبحانك اللهم الله وصلحا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين the last part is uh, inshallah read through lah <laughs> so 1 2 3 4 5 can try I mean, we will try we will try you will try and then you will see where it goes <laughs> so Thursday 9:30 eh is our class but it's still 10 right Ah, 30. Oh, so it's 1 hour. 30 kan? 30 is the maulid for kids, right?